right, this is going to be very short and sweet. Looking at boost gauge and fuel pressure gauge. Fuel pressure, just generic glow shift stuff. And you're not going to need this bracket kit because it's press fit. You're going to have your lighting harness here. This is your fuel pressure gauge here, if I can focus. And this is the fuel pressure harness. Also, we're doing a boost gauge right here. That's going to be a little easier because it's mechanical. So let's just get all that stuff out right there. Boom. So this is what you got. You've got your line and your fittings. There is no harness in there because the harness is attached to the gauge. I'll show you in just a moment. All right, the gauges are already installed here. Um, this is just the factory panel that I cut the verticals out between the switches. I got, I'll throw some pictures in here. And now we're going to pop the hood and I'll show you guys where these sensors are going to hook into. Alright, this is my DT, so the hood is very large, but it's an easy one hand pull. Boom, just like that. Pardon the noise, I got the unit running continuous right now. So here's what we got. Uh, your boost gauge is going to go in this little guy right here. And top of the manifold, fuel pressure gauge, Put myself down there, this little guy right here. That's going to be an eighth inch on both ends of it. Now if you wanted to do pre-filter, you would replace this right here with a, um, a banjo bolt adapter for a 12 valve Cummins. We'll bolt right into there and you can get fuel pressure right off the pump without the filter, before the filter. This right here is after the filter, which is where we're going to go for ease of installation. I am going to run them through this big bottom grommet down here. Get a good piece of shot at it. It's right there. That big bottom ground is where we're going to go. When I take this out, three screws here, 10 millimeter nut. If you've never taken it off, that'll come out and all that'll be accessible back here. This is where your pass through is. You've got to change your pass through, that's how you get to it. Now, a little trick of the dash 25 Torx T25. You can have this whole dash apart in about five minutes if you know what you're doing. Uh, this will pop up here and then you're going to wiggle this bad boy out this tab has been broken oh no that one's not been broken off but it's a slide in there don't rip it off got one of those take that out leave it there i got access all your screws here i'm gonna get those out uh, same deal with this once you get the fuse box cover off you'll pop this guy out here set him over there now you can work something back in here and get this whole strip off be gentle because you will break it since it's already been broken here. So I can actually cheat and go backwards. No, you're not supposed to. Now I got that off. Remember, you're not trying to break that tab there. It's no good. So now I got access to all your screws, get all your panels off. So we're gonna knock out that kick panel real quick. In there, if anybody wants to know what the hell this is, it took me a while to figure it out. The previous owner put it in there and grounded it up here like a complete jamoke and I think what they did is they grounded this this goes to the door harness which runs up here goes runs up here and goes through here I think they assumed that that was grounding the CB harness but it's not it's grounding the actual power mirrors and stuff which are already grounded so yeah it's pretty much useless I just haven't taken it out yet so we're gonna go through here with our wire and our boost hose again this is your pass through here this is heavy power if you need to put a heavy CB radio. These are both positive. Uh, all your air brake sensors, engage sensors, all that stuff is in through here. So this is all very important. These bottoms, the bottom ones here, these are not part of the pass-through. These are special Volvo fittings. I recommend carrying a couple. They have them a quarter and three-eighths. I don't think they have them a half, but I highly recommend it because if you have one leaking real bad, you're not going to find that at a hardware store. So now, I don't want to get the harness and stuff through here. I don't want to get the sensors and the fitting in there. I got plenty of zip ties to tie it all up. This should only take me a few minutes. That little guy down there is a, a hex. I forget what size exactly. I think that's a 13 or 14 mil. All right, so I've got this little guy uncoiled. This is our sensor harness. Um, you're going to come in from the engine side with this. I get the focus. It's fairly small. 
So we're going to go through the grommet with this one from the engine side that goes to the sensor actually under the hood. Um, I'm going to run it from here down across here because it's just the easiest way to do it. These panels just pull out once you get them all put together. You'll notice I've got my axle lock switches here. They used to be up there. It's easy, easy change and just move everything over a little bit. Uh, if you get in here and you notice you've got connectors that don't do anything, like I've got a few water separator connector that's just tied off because my truck's not equipped with it. So, And uh, this goofy looking wire here, this is the factory augs in that I've got hooked up and then I ran it up through the dash and then I've got my auxiliary cord actually coming into a full existing hole I buy my little mascot, Mr. Yoda. Or child if you want to get real specific. Don't hate. So there should be enough room back here to weasel my hand and everything else in this little channel here. And then the same thing on the other side. Just grab this guy, pop it out. And so once you got everything apart, it's very easy. Again, that's another switch there, probably PTO switch, I don't know. You'll find on these trucks a lot of unused wires. They'll have generally the same harnesses. So if it's not factory option, you're not going to have it. But it'll be tagged. I believe this one here is PTO. i got to get a better handle on it. But that's usually what that's going to be. It looks like PTO based on the gears right there. But this truck was not equipped with a factory PTO. If you do have a factory PTO in this generation truck, there'll be a switch here. My other truck has that. And you will have uh, an air solenoid down on top of the transmission for your PTO. Boost gauge holes, eighth inch nylon, very basic stuff, easy to work with. These are all the fittings. Here's how this is going to work. You'll see there looks like two groups of fittings here. There's a female fitting right here, goes in the back of the gauge. And you'll get a compression nut and a ferrule that go on there. I'll show you how to go together in a second. This will be the male side. This goes into the manifold. And unless I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it just screws right into the existing one. That's an eighth inch plug with a really big hex head on it. So we'll find out here in just a moment. Just to say that my goal at the moment is to at least get the uh, harnesses and stuff run. Hopefully get hooked up to the engine since I got nice weather down here. And I've already got the gauges mounted. And I've got to finish the wiring over to here. I'll go through that as well. But it's pretty basic. I've already done this a couple times. So I kind of know my way around it. This is a light harness for the uh, fuel pressure gauge. The boost gauge, which is on the left here. The harness is part of the gauge. Alright, I've got my little... Big kit out, which is very helpful. Keep a razor blade in here. Use a razor blade to cut a little cross in that grommet. I have a variety of things in here that generally do everything I need them to do. Very little I can't do on the road. So I'm going to take this razor blade right here and I cut a cross in this so that everything fits through. It's a little dull, but I think she'll get the job done. to go through from under the hood because it just makes things easier. I know you're wondering why there's a random bottle there. I wanted to see if it would hold the bottle in case I want to put an extra bottle of washer solvent there. But like everything on the VT is different. The fender mounts and everything and a lot of the stuff is broke so I got to fix all of it because it's an old truck. All right let's push these through real quick. Now real quick what I did do is I pulled these out. This if you don't if you have auxiliary switches on the old sevens this is where they come out. You'll notice I've got one here that's already hooked up for all the side lights this one is not terminated yet and there's actually hiding the harness somewhere there's a third one for if you have a third I found it it's in there it's back there see the wire right there they tucked it in the back but it's there so if you have a uh, if you have two switches you'll have two of these hanging out if you have three you'll have three the third one's there everything's up in the dash just gotta get the switch. Uh, real quick, the fan control solenoid is this guy 